Welcome back to Triliners. I'm Bill, and today we're going to turn this 150 quart Coleman cooler into an awesome live well that will keep your bait lively for days. Okay, the first thing you're going to need in this project is your beer cooler. Second thing you're going to need is the cooler you're going to build your live well out of. Now this is a 150 quart Coleman cooler I picked up at Wally World today. I also get, picked up a couple of bubble boxes, some silicone caulk, a couple of extra tees, some extra uh, aquarium tubing, some epoxy, a larger air stone, some D batteries, and a piece of 7 16 OD, 5 16 ID tubing. We'll probably, and I uh, just dug these four tiny screws up out of the junk drawer, out of the shop. And we'll probably be using a wire brush and a drill for, for assembly. Uh, so, let's get started. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is figure out the positioning of where I want this humongous air stone. I don't want it on the curve because I'm going to stick this with epoxy, so I want to get off of that radius to where it's sitting flat, and then we're going to mark where I want it. Now that I've made up my mind where I want it, I'm going to take this cordless drill with a wire brush on it, and I'm going to scuff the bottom to give the epoxy something to grab onto. And I'm also going, to, also going to take the bottom of this air stone, do the same thing to it. Now, as you can see, it's dulled that down. Give uh, a good surface for that epoxy to bind to. Okay, while that epoxy's drying, let's get uh, these bubble boxes ready to be mounted. If you never bought one of these before, the airline and airstone with the weight is inside the box. We're not going to be using those today. Now the bubble boxes are ready to be mounted. So what we're going to do, let's figure out what position they're going to be in. As you can see, I'm not being like crazy accurate about it. And we're going to mark our penetration point right there. Let's get our drill and we're going to mount our boxes here by the end of the air stone. That way we can come out and go through. But we're not going to just drill a hole and run the tubing through it like everybody else does that I've watched on YouTube. There's a reason for that. This cooler has an inside liner, a layer of insulation, and an outside liner. If you do that and water splashes up and gets in there, then it fills this liner with water. And 
you're going to notice, especially with a 150 quart cooler, that the damn thing's gotten a hell of a lot heavier when it's empty. It's because it's not empty. It's because it's holding water between those two layers. We're going to get around that by using the 7 16 tubing. So we take a drill with a, this is a 29 64 bit. And as you can see, the insulation was flying out of there. That's the insulation between those two layers. Then we're going to take our tubing, force that through there. It's going to fit just a little bit loose, but that's okay. We're going to cut a piece of it and run it through each hole. Now what I'm going to do is mix up some more epoxy and I'm going to go around the outer and the inner connection. Then we'll come back after that cures and we'll trim that off. Okay, while we're waiting on that to dry, we're going to take a uh, 964 bit and pre-drill these bubble boxes. While all that stuff over there is drying. It don't really matter uh, where you're drilling them as long as you're not impacting anything. I'm going right between the 2D batteries and then over here in this corner because the screws are so small. Now you could epoxy these on there, but the problem with that is, is if you ever need to change them, then what you're going to have to do is buy another bubble box remove all this stuff, put it into your old housing, and that may not bother you. Or it may be one of those if you're buying new things, you'd rather put the new ones on. And there we go. Let's get rid of this big old giant sticker. Okay, one thing did occur to me. And I'll demonstrate that later in the video. Well, we're going to put a vent right here in the middle of the lid. And to do that, we're going to drill a hole just big enough for some of our 7 16 tubing to go through there. And we're going to epoxy that into place. I'm going to demonstrate later in the video why this vent is so important and why of a lot of the videos I watched here on YouTube people were making a mistake and didn't realize it. I mean if you if you were only going to use the live well for you know out for the day or something like that you'd be fine. But I'm talking about long-term bait storage. Like, what happens if you go out and catch a bunch of bait and it's going to be a week before you get to use it and you don't have the benefit of these big giant live wells 
like some of us have. This live well should hold bait if you keep an eye on the water and the temperature, keep it in the shade, keep a little ice in there. Should keep keep bait for at least a week, maybe 10 days. Now, if you're one of the many that use a bilge pump to circulate your water, it's not as critical, but it is still critical. Okay, it's been a little while. The epoxy is still a little bit tacky, but dry enough, I think we can do some trimming. What we're gonna do is trim off this excess. We're gonna trim off this excess tubing. Now we got our vent. And I don't know if you can see it. I'm gonna try to turn it. Uh, what I've done is epoxied a T into the end of this bubble bar. Because even with two pumps, I don't know if it can, if I tee them both together and have them feeding into one end, it'd be a lot of bubbles and nothing. So what I did is took the adapter, plug out of this end, and epoxy a T in there and then epoxy one of those shut. And what we're gonna do is hook one pump to each end of this bubble bar. That way, even if some of this gets stopped up, it'll just push the bubbles further out into the middle of the bar. Now we're gonna take some of the, the original tubing that came with the bubble boxes. I thought I would need the extra that I bought. I don't think I'm going to. We hook it to the bubble box. And as you can see, what that does, what this whole setup does is with this being epoxied in, it keeps all that liquid from getting between these layers of the cooler. And now we have the bubble bar hooked to two bubble boxes. We have a vent up here. The reason why we have that vent, I told you I was going to explain that a little bit later. The reason why I have that vent is this thing seals up tight. And I've seen so many people make this mistake. Let me rig up a little demonstration to show you what I'm talking about. Okay, imagine this is your live well that you just built. You've sealed everything up, everything looks good. But you don't put that vent in there that we put in. This is the overhead. Now it will take a while. But this is what will happen. Now the air is coming up from the bottom and it's filling this overhead station. But the, if this lid is sealed tight with no vent, eventually it will fill up all this headroom and start being a problem. I'm not saying it's going to happen all the time, but if you're opening and closing the cooler during the day, getting your bait out, you're probably fine. But if you leave it setting overnight, expecting your bait to be alive the next morning, you're not gonna get the airflow through there that you were expecting. Now you can hear the pump loaded up. And then you come along and open the lid and it's bubbling like hell and you think everything's fine when it's actually not. Now, if I hit the camera, let me crack this lid a little. Mm. 
right. Now, watch what happens as soon as the seal is released. So that little vent is kind of important. Now, as part of the reason why I use the larger tubing drilled through epoxy that in place, because there's room between this tubing and that tubing. I probably honestly don't need this top vent, but just to be on the safe side, it's there. And the reason why I put it in the middle is because when you're going down the river or uh, say this is in the back of the truck, which is what I built it for, everything goes side to side or front to back. So it's sloshing this way and this way. It's not really sloshing a whole lot through the middle. So whatever little bit gets up here is of no matter. Anyway, this is my latest build on a uh, live well. It's the first one I built in a long time. But its primary purpose is to go out and catch bait, keep it in the back of the truck. I don't have to drag a 12 volt battery around or any of that mess. And I can keep bait alive all night on the river when we're fishing for flathead or baiting out for trout line. Thanks for watching, guys. Glad you stopped by. Get out of here. I got stuff to do.